Welcome back to another episode of The Marathon. My name's Mayor, and in today's episode, I wanted to talk about giving you some very simple tools to help with your mental health. <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out today. If you're not already subscribed, please click the link down below and subscribe to my channel. Become a marathoner. Uh, life's not a sprint, it's a marathon. There's also a marathoner Facebook group. The link is always down below if you'd like to join us. And today's video was actually inspired by a comment from a marathoner a few days ago. She was talking about how she unexpectedly, as you always, you know, seem to have them, had a panic attack. It's never something that you're <laughs> anticipating, at least not in my experience. And she said that she was disappointed because all of her tools kind of like flew out the window. And that seems to be the case for a lot of anxiety and panic attacks and just like stress in general. Um, when something unexpected happens like a panic attack or just like life throws you a curveball and you start to get anxious, it can be almost impossible to remember the things that you have heard in a podcast or on a YouTube video or you and your friends have talked about or you saw it on a meme, you're like, what am I supposed to do? I forget. So in today's video, I wanted to give you some tips on how to create an anxiety toolbox. Now, this is something that actually uh, was inspired by my late husband, Jeremy. He used to keep something in his wallet at all times, and it was like different notes from his therapist, and he put them on index cards, and he slipped them in his wallet so that when he started to feel really anxious or really panicked, he could just slip it out, and he would all the time. Like, that thing was worn. Um, this was a few years ago, so I feel like some people may do that now. Um, you could put it in your wallet, you could put it in your purse, you could slip it in the top drawer of your desk at work, so it's like always there waiting for you. You could tape it to your mirror in your bathroom. But what I would suggest is have it somewhere that's like on you at most times or is super accessible. So maybe you have a few, maybe you have one in your glove box. What I do is I just, I have a note in my phone because this bad boy is with me at all times. Clearly it's like sitting right beside me for no apparent reason right now. It's something that my therapist used to say, like you need to work on your skills your mental health skills, your self-care skills, your self-love, whatever you want to talk, whatever you want to call it. You need to work on those things when you're feeling great so that when you aren't feeling so great, they feel like more at your at grasp, at like at hand, if you will. And that's something that I think is really difficult for a lot of us. When we're feeling good, that's when I think we start to let certain things slide but when you're feeling in a good space, this would be a good place to make something. So a note on your phone, an index card like Jer had in his wallet. Here are the things that I have done that have helped me. So I have a note in my phone for when I get stressed and it is just a few bullet points of things for me to repeat to myself, to remind myself what to do. So it will tell me my mantra for when I'm in that mindset, which sometimes it's, this is temporary, this is temporary, this is temporary, this is temporary. And that's just something that I'll repeat to myself over and over and over because I know when I'm feeling anxious or I'm feeling upset, this too shall pass, which is another thing that I often will say to myself, this too shall pass, this too shall pass. Like we've been here before, we've gotten out of it before, you know, like just sort of a pep talk. But when you're in that mind space, it's hard to come up with it. So to have it in your phone can be super helpful. I also have a list of my whys because often I'll get stressed out on why I'm doing certain things, either professionally or personally. Um, and they are great to just have at hand to remind myself. Even in spin, like this morning, my spin instru instructor, Chelsea, was saying like, what is your why? Like, why were you in the room today? Why did you sign up? Remember when you signed up? Why did you feel that? And it 
it's like whenever she says that in class it's always that like the quintessential moment when I need to remember why I'm on the bike and then I'm like oh right this is why this is why this is why so to have your why close by is something like that's cheesy but it's really helpful maybe a couple of like breathing exercises like the one that Jer would do was like what are five things I can see what are five things I can feel what are five things I can hear like that sort of thing what are four things I can see what you know hear see See, touch, taste, like get you back to your senses. For me, I often will just be like, feel the, the ground under my feet, feel the ground under my feet, feel present. I can feel my legs in my pants. I can feel my shirt on. I can feel my hair up. Like just to get myself back to that present moment really helps me. If you have something that's reoccurring in your life that's really upsetting, maybe you often have to see someone that you would rather not see, but because of life circumstances you need to, it would be good to have something in your phone so that you can be proactive. Like, okay, I'm gonna go into this meeting with this boss or this family member who often will trigger me, have like something in your phone that you can just read beforehand that you can remind yourself of like, okay, X, Y, and Z. Whew, even if you gotta take that phone into the bathroom <laughs> while you're at that family member's house and reread it, like you do you, whatever you gotta do to get through it. So that's really helpful to have those mantras and those like exercises at hand in your phone. You don't need to remember them, you just need to remember to put your phone on the notes app or pull something out of your wallet. That can be really helpful. And then another thing to do is to keep a list of things that help you and nurture your self care, your self love, your mental health and just yourself in general. Because like I said, when you're feeling good, um, it can be easy to like, you know, brush those self care things aside. But when you're feeling rough, it is often so difficult to get the motivation to do those things. So one of my favorite podcasts is Armchair Expert and Dax Shepard often talks about his experience in AA and he is a sponsor himself now and he talks about how if someone calls him and is having a really rough day or they want to drink or they want to use, he will say to them, go move your body for one hour and then call me back. And he said nine times out of 10, they feel much better. Like moving your body is so important, whether it's just literally like walking your dog for a half an hour, getting out into nature, not being on your phone while you're doing that thing. Or like for me, it's spin, it's yoga, it's, you know, a girlfriend wants to meet for coffee, let's go for a walk. Just moving your body force yourself and sometimes it feels like forcing but like to get out to get some exercise to have um, like an accountability buddy at the gym or in your exercise classes or a girlfriend who you're like okay every day on our lunch break we're gonna go for a walk or whatever even if you go for a walk together and you both listen to music or a podcast like you don't have to be talking the whole time but just to move your body um some other things that i've written down that really help me obviously meditating i love the headspace app i have a link that is like not an affiliate i don't get anything for it i've just used headspace so much now that i have a link that if you want to try it for free for two weeks you're welcome to it's linked below it's always linked on my Instagram as well in the drop-down menu on my at redhead mayor Instagram um, meditating like I have meditated in the car I've meditated in the radio booth I've meditated uh, at a friend's house I've excused myself like I have meditated before a master class before a spin I've sat in the car and done it like there are on the headspace app there's like emergency ones where they're just a minute they're just two they're just three minutes and they just help you like when you're feeling that panic mode and like I posted on wise word Wednesday earlier this week you don't have to reinvent the wheel you don't have to go at this alone you're not alone like use the tools that are already out there I think a lot of people make this so much more complicated than it needs to be other things that really help me when I'm feeling like my mental health is slipping a little bit um, sleep <laughs> is very important so that's why quite often like I'll go to bed at 9 and my I'm like lights out by 9 30 and it's just something that I've made a priority because I know if I'm tired everything else is so much harder so that can go in your toolbox like meditating moving making sure you're getting enough sleep 
um, reading, getting off of your phone and getting off of social media. Obviously I'm a huge advocate for social media when it's used positively, but as we all know, when our mental health isn't great, we can just like spiral into just not great feelings when you're on social media, that like comparison culture, right? So reading an actual book or a magazine, listening to something that makes you feel good. Like I love that podcast. I have a few podcasts I listen to. I listen to audiobooks and I know when I need to like pull out Style Your Mind, which is a great podcast by my mentor, Kara Alwell Leba, and I need to listen to her, like give me some uplifting, you know, messages or something. And also another thing in your toolbox is knowing who you can talk to. Like I have some friends who I know are comfortable talking about mental health, and I know I have some friends who are not comfortable talking about it. So when I'm in a panic mode or I'm spiraling or I'm like being really hard on myself, I have a few friends I'm very grateful for who I can be honest with and be like, this is the gross things I'm thinking. And they're like X, Y, and Z, they bring me back. And it just feels good to A, know that I'm not alone and B, have someone else talk to me about it. Cause nine times out of 10, they're like, oh yeah, I think I've thought that way before or this girlfriend thought that way or this happened to them. So many people go through these things and I think it can be quite isolating and feel like you are the only one who's going through something, but like, you're not special. We're all, we're all feeling this way at some point or another. And so when I say that, I mean, it's good to talk to someone to know that you're like, you're not the only one feeling that way. Hopefully that makes sense. So those are some of the things in my toolbox. I hope that this video has helped you. I would love to know what's in your anxiety toolbox or your self-love toolbox or your mental health toolbox or just your trying to feel good on a regular basis toolbox, whatever you want to call it. Um, comment down below and let's have a conversation because maybe something that I haven't found helpful you do and then another marathoner will be happy to hear that suggestion as well so that's it for this video lace up subscribe become a marathoner life's on a sprint it's a marathon and um you're not alone we're all in this together but keeping those tools at hand and at the ready can really make a difference so i hope you're well and i will see you in the next one bye